Florida. And I am here with Coco, the Havanese. And she's a little bit matted. So, well, a lot matted. So, although her mom hates even a hand scissor shoe shortcut, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to save anything on this dog. Even her face is matted. Everything's matted. The ears are solid. And I'm usually very, very, very against um, the shaving of solid matted ears because it's very easy for a hematoma to develop on an ear that is shaved. And last time I worked on this dog, she did not want me doing anything with her. I am possible pup. Um, she was very reactive to any tugging or pulling it all on her coat. Um, so anyway, I told the pet parent that she's going to be naked, literally naked. And her mom wasn't too happy about that, but I didn't give her a choice. So let's get busy and see if this little one can handle the work that's ahead of us. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get a longer blade through as much as I can so there's less risk of clipper irritation, except for the ears. The ears are so pelted. I'm probably gonna have to peel those off. Let's see here. <clears throat> now her mom said that this big mat here wasn't there this morning. Um, she said that that one's a new one. But I think that one's attached to this one. I think they're all part of the same mat. See? Hair doesn't stay together like that unless it's matted when you shave it off. <laughs> the brakes. <laughs> Yep. I was on my way to the groomer and I slammed on my brakes because the car in front of me stopped real quick and the dog fell off the seat and rolled on the carpet on the floorboard and it got matted. Just that fast. I, it was all brushed out when I left the house. Somebody actually told me that excuse once. So let's talk about what causes this type of matting. This matting right here. Every groomer knows what causes it. And it's more than lack of brushing. It's washing your dog and not doing a proper job brushing it out. You can never, ever, ever, ever give a dog a quick bath if the dog has long hair. Never, ever, ever, ever. It's better not to wash the dog at all. It's better to let the dog be dirty than to give it a quick bath.
but to her owner's credit, she did concede to having her shave down. And I give her credit for that. If she would not have conceded to having her shaved down, I would have refused service. The backstory on this dog is it's a regular client that comes every six weeks. She wanted to keep the dog in full coat. It came in heat two weeks ago when the sister came in for grooming. And so she missed her appointment two weeks ago. And now we have this. That's why I'm assuming she got a quick bath. One bath on a dog can cause this if the dog has long hair. One bath. And it's not always neglect. It's lack of good information. It's lack of follow through it's a lack of doing your homework but it doesn't mean neglect this doesn't this isn't neglect in a sense it is but it's neglecting to brush your dog one time after a bath she's got hair that's getting in her mouth because it's all around her face um and she's sniffing what's coming off of her um that's what a lot of people don't understand. But when a dog comes in with its hair this matted, regardless of why it got this matted, um, you have to trust your groomer's judgment on what needs to be done. And if your groomer says your dog needs to be shaved, it really does need to be shaved. So don't argue with your groomer. Don't pretend that your groomer doesn't know what they're doing. Don't pretend that your groomer's being lazy. Just say, okay, I messed up. We'll have to start over. Hair grows back. It'll grow back. Now, on the other hand, if this were a double-coated dog or a Pomeranian, I would have refused service, even though I know it needs to be shaved, because... Shaving a double-coated dog who's matted, you'll surely destroy the dog's coat. And when that happens, you know, that can, not always, but can be a permanent um, just destruction of the dog's coat. So, if it were a double-coated dog, I would have refused service because I wouldn't want to be the one to destroy the coat. Okay, sit still. All right, don't know how around the face is going to go. with a shorter blade on the rest of it. I did as long of a blade as possible where she's gonna be under the sunlight. But the other areas where it's tighter, I'm gonna have to go shorter. All right, you. It's okay, you're being a good girl. I'm so proud of you. So the ears, the ears are so, so bad. But I hate shaving ears because the hematoma risk. Once you lighten all the weight of the ear by getting the mat off, sometimes the blood will rush into the end of the ear and it'll feel funny and they'll start shaking their head due to the lightening of the weight of the ear and during that shaking of the head causes blood vessels to burst inside the end of the ear and then the ear swells up and fills up with blood on the inside and that's a hematoma it's like a swollen ear full of blood but there's little you can do to prevent it at 
at least her ear infection's pretty well cleared up. That's good. So what I'm gonna do to try to prevent the hematoma on the ear is to try to keep as much weight on the ear as possible. So rather than shaving it with a tin blade, which would be something you'd think you would need to do, if she'll hold still, I can try to splice through this and save some of the weight of hair on the ears. I don't know if you can see what this looks like. See this ear? down just a bit. Stay home. No, stay right here. You're not going nowhere. Try to angle this camera down. All right. Maybe that'll work. Maybe so, maybe no. Don't try this at home, kids. All right, so now that I have all these split up, rather than shaving it, I'm gonna knock off pieces as I decide how to proceed. I just don't wanna make it bald. Not for the owner, just for the weight of hair on the ears. I don't want the ears bald. And I wanna to try to do it without any discomfort at all to the dog. So I wanna see if that's possible. Girl, you're being very good. I have changed some of my policies, which some customers probably will find upsetting because I've decided to no longer offer any heavy clipping of double-coated dogs. We're going to keep them all in natural coat if they choose to come to me. Like Pomeranians and long haired Dachshunds and Pekingese. I don't feel good, and it's a personal decision that I've never liked having to clip down those dogs and, you know, always felt like I had to because it's what the pet owner wants, but I don't have to. And I decided to finally make a personal stand against it because I believe the right thing for those dogs is to keep them in coat and to take care of them. But it is a controversial subject. There's debate on both sides of what's right or wrong with those dogs. But even like these dogs, they should be kept in coat. 
and it all just depends on if the pet parent does the homework, whether it can be maintained or not. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy with my decision, even though some people will be upset about it. But some of us need to start making a stand for what's right in the care of these dogs and teaching what's right and then teaching how to maintain it and teaching, you know, how easy it can really be, right? So I think I'm leaving enough weight of hair and you can see once I knocked off the top parts of those mats, I've literally unlocked them down closer. Yeah, everybody's got their choices. And I'm not saying anybody who does it, you know, that's, that's a personal decision for you. So I wouldn't put you down if you decide to do it. You know, it's just my house, my rule. No, no nakedness for Juju. <laughs> oh, and tomorrow I'm starting a new um, pet training project for a Havanese who is probably, could possibly be the worst behaved dog I've ever seen on her toenails. And she has horrific separation anxiety, horrible behavior problems. And she's my new pet project. So 7 p.m. tomorrow. 7 p.m. Um, Friday and 7 p.m. Saturday I'll be working with her. And she'll need more than that. That's just getting started. But I have hope for this little girl. She gets highly aggressive. She's like 18 months old. And she has her some issues. But I have hope for her. So. Alright. I've got the ears so that they're not. They look horrible. But they're not. Weighted. Enough weight hasn't been taken off of them. To where they should get hematomas. Alright. So now. The face. I'm not going to shave out these mats. I'm going to come in and chunk them out one by one. And I'm just, I'm not taking them all the way to the skin. The mats go all the way to the skin. But I'm unlocking the mat by taking it as far down as I can with the scissors. It's okay. Good girl. And then these in through here, just gonna part the hair away rather than shaving the whole face. Just chunk out what I have to. Let the longer hair fall over it. All right, and she's got some big ones on her head as you can see. See that one? That's a mat. <laughs> it's just standing straight up. I'm just going to splice through it. And as you can see here, she has a bald spot where she's been scratching the back of her ear. So all that's balded already. And it's scaly all around it. So had I shaved her bald with all this scaling all around where she scratched, she probably would have dug herself raw within an hour. And that's why I go through all this extra work to make sure that we leave enough hair to not irritate this dog's skin. That's why I used a four on the body and why 
I didn't shave the ears and why I chunked out the face. Sure, zipping it all off with a tin would go really fast and it would be really even and, you know, teach that owner a lesson. It's how some groomers look at it. But sh zipping it off with a tin is not what's best for the dog, in my opinion. So all around this eye, under the red tearing is really, really red skin. So I'm not gonna shave that out either. All right, now I'm gonna go to a five blade. And I'm going to try to get some more of this off with a five before I choose to go with a seven. No, she had a horrific ear infection that just cured up. But the ear looks much better. That was really good of the owner. She got it all taken care of. Got it treated. It looks really good. So a week or two ago, last week when I was doing the beaver terrier that was really matted, the problem with that particular situation wasn't that the dog was matted. Yes, mats happen for many different reasons. I think this one was just one bad bath, but I wasn't putting the pet owner down for the matting. Of course mats happen, right? I wouldn't judge the pet owner for that. It, it happens and it happens really, really fast sometimes, okay? What I was putting the pet owner down for, and I wasn't even trying to put her down. That's the wrong way of saying it. What I was upset about and why I refused service is she wouldn't let me shave the dog down. That was the problem. And as soon as a customer starts boo-hooing, when their dog is this matted and, you know, they, they don't want it shaved at all costs, I kick them out. I'm like, no, go. Sorry. I'm not going to shave it against their will. If somebody says, no, I don't want it shaved, I'm not going to do it anyway. Of course not. I know a lot of groomers will, but I won't. But I won't. I won't do the dog anyway, of course not. So I think the owner thought I was judging her for the mats, I wasn't. I was judging her because she wouldn't get it shaved down. She, she was like, you know, save the hair. I'm like, no. <laughs> No, we're not saving the hair. No, 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 no. And he was as bad as this. Mm -hmm. She's being very good. Very, very good. And I know her mom's going to cry when she sees her because she really wanted her in full coat. But it's the right thing to do for the dog. you got to think about the, the dog's feelings. Right, baby? got to think about your feelings. Yes, we do. Yeah, it grows. It grows fast, doesn't it? Grows a half an inch a month. You're right, Kristen. Some people don't realize how much it hurts their pet. And what's even worse is some people don't care how much it hurts their pet. They want it to look like they want it to look. And you know how I know that? Because when I've seen dogs this matted and people were boo-hooing about getting it cut short, 
I get very blunt and almost vulgar about it. And I say your dog could get nicked. It could get cut open. Your dog is going to scream and it could end up bloody. And you know what they say? Just do your best, just try. Yeah, no. No way, Jose. And no impossible pups out there like, no. <laughs> Did somebody say something about vet wrapping the ears? Yeah, Jan, I hear a lot of groomers say that. They're like, they shave down the ears and then to prevent hematomas, they send the dog home in a happy hoodie or they strap the dog's ears down to its head so it can't flap the ears back and forth to cause a hematoma. I say no, let's just leave a little bit more hair here and not shave the ears. Let's try that, if we can. If we can't, say if the ear is so bad that you have to peel it off with a 10 or closer, what I do is I send them to the vet for the grooming. There's animal hospitals here in town that offer grooming because if I'm confident that a hematoma is going to happen, say like with a golden doodle with matted solid ears, they're already super sensitive around the ears, right? If I'm sure that a hematoma is likely to happen, I refer them to the vet's groomer for grooming because it's just going to get shaved down anyway. And that way, the vet who owns the practice can treat the dog instead of me paying a vet bill for the owner's neglect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's how I do it. It's like, no, that's too much of a liability for me to accept to groom your dog. So that's how I always present it. It's like your dog is in such a condition that I'm not willing to accept the liability. And I know not all groomers can do that because they work for other people and their bosses won't let them. Or you simply have to pay the rent and you don't have the option of turning away the dog. I understand that. Been there, done that. You know, I'm thankful I'm in a position where I don't have to um, I don't have to do things that are against my standards anymore. Or that are super high risk. So I'm lucky in that respect. I really am. And I'm thankful for it. Yes, I remember that, Lisa. All right, let's try to even up this head before the bath. So as you can see, I have saved enough of a plushness of coat where she's not going to get sunburned or skin damaged. So let's just shorten all this up, make her look cute. Let's go put her in the tub. Mm 
Yeah, you can still leave a little bit of style even when you shave down a dog. You don't have to, you know, make them ugly even when you shave them. You can still make them cute, right? So I put the gate up on my room here because now that Alexis works with me, there's some dogs I like to keep loose at my feet and this way they can still stay loose in my room. visit was very nice last night. That was so much fun. She was so sweet. She's on her way to Intergrum, so I'm hoping she can meet up with Amy while she's there. So where I saved some hair on the ears, I'm using my fingers and rubbing the hair. There's still some mats at the end of the ears. And you noticed in there when I first shaved it off, I was rubbing the ends of the ears. And now in the tub, I'm taking these mats between my fingers and rubbing them. Now I know a lot of you groomers are probably like, that's the most idiotic thing I've ever seen in my life. You're dematting a dog by rubbing the mat between your fingers. Are you an idiot? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, 
This typically works when you unlock the mat and you take the mat off the top, especially big thick mats like these when you get it right down close to the skin. But you leave a length of hair. I've got about a half to three quarters of an inch out off the ear leather. So I'm just rubbing these felted areas back and forth between my fingers. I'll do it again with the, how did you do that? With the um, conditioner. Come here, Missy Ma'am. Gotta tighten this up a bit. When they wiggle out of it like that, you just gotta tighten it down. And then sometimes when they're pull, pull, pulling, they can loosen up these upper um, slides. So if they're loosening up the upper slides like that, you can take this piece here, slide it down, and then lock it so that they can't loosen those up. mentioned salad. I forgot I have a salad in the refrigerator I need to eat. I love my salads. kind of girl. <laughs> Good girl.
I feel bad for this pet parent. She really wanted to keep this dog in full coat. Where are you going? Ugh. Missy ma'am. Missy ma'am. Get your tail in there. Just calm down, you. Just calm down. You're all right. Poor baby. That sounds delicious, Dottie. Hi, Alexis. We just shaved down a Havanese. She's naked. We have a naked Havanese. Alexis felt how mad she was. She was like, oh my gosh. It's so bad. It's all right, Mama. What you moaning and groaning about? Hmm? I took good care of you. I did. I took good care of the baby. Yeah, I know, I know, I know it. It's a rough life being a doggy, isn't it? Hmm? Is it a rough life being a little doggy? Yeah, I know. I hear ya. She's a tiny little Havanese, isn't she? I've been seeing a lot of little ones lately. Itty bitty little full grown Havanese. Yes, Lisa, 95% of all Havanese talk to me while I'm working on them. They've always got something to say. head for a few minutes.
pouting. It's all right. I know it feels funny, huh? It feels funny to have all that hair off. Mm -hmm. baby. Good girl, see? You look right. I know your mom is out in the car crying. Yes, I do. Now see, her mom feels bad enough already about this. I would never want a pet client to feel bad when this happens, unless they make the wrong choice and want the hair saved at all cost. Then yes, I do want them to feel bad. She was practically in tears, Lavender Puppy, because she didn't want her dog shaved down, but she knew it needed to be done. And that is a hard thing when you had your heart set on long coat. Some of you know that, and some of you know it can get out of control sometimes. so cute. Yes, you're so cute. So cute. Exactly, how are you? That is so true. Or Maltese going through change of coat. And that's something else you have to remember about this little dog. She's right at an age where she would be going through a change of coat. And when dogs are this age and going through a change of coat, yes, they can mat every day. But if you don't follow through from one brushing to the next, like if you don't complete the job, of brushing and combing the dog from one end of the body to the other on each time that you sit down and brush the coat very 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 quickly will it turn real bad and if you wash it like i said earlier and you don't finish your job instantly overnight it would be this bad and if you just do your regular brush outs during the change of coat, like between 10 and 12 months old on a dog like this, the hair will mat every day. But say you sit it down and you start to brush it out and your puppy gets upset with you and you stop and you decide to wait another day. Bad choice. 
Give it 30 minutes, go back to it. Give it another 30 minutes, go back to it. Don't wait to the next day. Because if you start to brush it out and you don't finish and you wait to the next day, it's an absolute nightmare, guys. And then it hurts and then your puppy fights you harder and it just snowballs from there and within a week, you've got a disaster. And, you know, sometimes when that happens with a pet owner, we try to be as gentle as we possibly can. We try to be as understanding as we can, but we also try to do what's right for the dog and not hurt the dog. And sometimes, like I had one pet owner tell me that I told her her dog needed to be shaved down. She's like, oh no, absolutely not. And I'm like, well, it's your only choice. Oh no, absolutely not. And she said to me, she goes, that's why I'm bringing her to you. You're the professional. You know how to do it where it won't hurt. Because I told her brushing out the mats would hurt the dog. And she says, that's my whole point of bringing her to a professional. You know how to do it so it won't hurt the dog. And I was like, no, no, I don't. It hurts the dog. Doesn't matter who does it. It hurts. You know? And she, she was pretty adamant. I had to refuse service to her. Because she... She couldn't understand how a certified master groomer wasn't able to demat a dog pain free. And she was a client, you know, for about two years. And after that, she never came back. We're not miracle workers. We have brushes and combs just like you do. There's no magic potion. There's no easy way for a professional. It's not about the tools you have. It's a brush and a comb. There's no magic sprays. There's no magic conditioners. There's no professional formulations. It's a brush and a comb. She's getting tired. Yeah. Speaking of old-fashioned elbow grease, Tina, would you like to hear a little story from my childhood? Uh-oh. Just saw ear twitching. Don't you even start twitching those ears. So there's this little story from my childhood. See, my mother had a pet grooming salon and a dog kennel. And we all worked really hard, and I worked in the business from the time I was six years old. I handled clients, I cleaned, I did different things. And one time my mom gave me a job where it was um, a very difficult cleaning job, right? And I was complaining, and I said, I can't get this. And she, my mom said, what you need is some good old-fashioned elbow grease. I was like, really? Where do I get elbow grease? She goes, well, just go to the 7-Eleven over there. Because I'd go walking to the 7-Eleven all the time when I was a kid. And she goes, just go to the 7-Eleven and ask the manager of the store for some elbow grease. <laughs> so I did. And I'm looking all through the shelves and all the cleaning supplies. And I'm trying to find, find the elbow grease. I guess I was about nine years old. And um, I couldn't find any. And Harold, the manager of the store at that time, um, he, he looks at me looking for something. He says, can I help you? And I was like, I'm just trying to find some elbow grease. <laughs> he busted up laughing. And I knew right then and there my mom got me. <laughs> I was so mad. I stormed out of the store with my face all red and stormed all the way home. 
I was so mad at my mom for doing that to me. <laughs> yes, I was a really bad kid though, Lisa. I was a really naughty kid. I think I deserved it. <laughs> and if I didn't, I got her back when I was a teenager, trust me. I would put a bow on her, but I don't want to give her anything to scratch at. Sometimes when they have all their hair come off as a little dog like this, I don't want to put anything on the head to make her scratch at these ears, and I don't want anything around the neck to feel funny on her. So I'm going to leave her without a bow. Even though it would look really cute, I don't think it's in her best interest. Right? No way am I going to tell all. You guys will never know. They'll never know. They'll never, ever know. They'll never know. <laughs> it's okay. I didn't hurt you. I didn't. See, I made you feel better. You okay? See the comb? Comb's not going to hurt you anymore. See? No, it's not going to hurt you. See? It's not going to hurt. I know that comb's been a bad guy for you, hasn't it? Mm hmm? You good? You want to come to me? Come on in. Come on. It's okay. No. Oh. She feels better. See? It's okay. She's scared. Look at her shaking. It's okay. I still need to trim her belly. She's just trembling. Poor puppy. It's okay. I guess I better text her mom. I think I see her parked out there. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna shave her belly with a seven F because I definitely don't want to go too close on that. She does need a dress. You know what, I have some dresses that would fit her. I should dress her, shouldn't I? That's a good idea. I've done that before when I've had to cut down a dog and the owner didn't want them cut. And it usually makes the owner smile when they see the dog. Like if it's a boy, I'll put a t-shirt on it. See, you guys can never find out what I did because it's sealed in juvenile records. <laughs> Let's go find you a little dress. 
You wanna go find you a little dress? I'll text your mom and then I'll go find you something to wear. <laughs> All right, Coco. Your mama's gonna cry. How does autocorrect take Coco and change it to look? <laughs> How? Gidget has some dresses that are too big for her. So I'm thinking it'll fit this little girl just right. There we go. Now she's got clothes. Girls rule. Yes, I commend Mama for doing what's right, too. Now she feels better. Be right with you. Yeah, my, my video went black and I just deleted it. I just decided not to keep it up because it was ruined. So it's like, why keep it up if it's ruined?
Big head. Ah, hi. Um, that went well. She really didn't say anything about the dress. I had to bring it up. Okay. But she was happy. So, anyway. What's the number game here? What are y'all doing? Who's doing what up there? I'm trying to find it. Lavender Puppy says, pick a number, 1 through 20. Want to see who here is a mind reader? 1. <laughs> number 1. All right, Lavender Puppy. <laughs> She's not gonna tell us the answer. I'm gonna find my salad. See my very colorful salad? <laughs> Roberta. <laughs> 18. I guess I was way off. She lots of colors. All right, guys, I'm going to log off for tonight. Hopefully we'll have something good tomorrow. Hopefully. And hopefully I won't make the screen go black anymore. And hopefully I won't make any more clients mad at me like I did today. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll log off tonight and we will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.